Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, September 19th, and I'm Elizabeth, the community manager for Chaos. Good to see some new faces here today. And also, I won't say old faces because I that yeah <laughs> has a different connotation and I don't want to do that. So um some faces that we've seen before, we'll say that. I'm probably the oldest face on this, but anyway. Whatever. Um, yeah, so this is the weekly community call for chaos. Um, quick reminder for those who might be new is that um, this is under the chaos code of conduct. So keep that in mind as you interact with us today. And as you can tell, we do not care if you have your cameras on or off. This is a super chill meeting because we are a super chill group. Um, so you are welcome to interject at any time. Um, you can raise your hand, you can chat with us over on the side. We'll try to incorporate that into the flow of the meeting as we do. Um, yeah, I will share my screen. Also, hi, I haven't seen you all in a while. So I've been off for two weeks. So thank you to those who have covered for me while I was out. Matt, mostly you, I think <laughs> you got the brunt of it. Um, I don't know, Sean, if you did. Ruth also covered. Yeah, me. I think Ruth covered a bit, Matt covered a bit. So I, was, I was there, but I don't think I was ever alone. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate you all very much. Um, yes. And I know I said I was going to paint my bathroom while I was gone, because for those who don't know, it's been half painted for like six months, just like the part I could reach. And I didn't quite get done. <laughs> I still didn't quite get done. It's the ADHD part of me. But I did get other things done that have been on my list for legitimately six years. There was something I got done that was on my list for six years. So. That was a huge load off. So I appreciate you all very much. Um, yeah. Here are some interesting facts for those who want to learn something new today. And you know what? If you all want to Google something or you're just not sure, you can. I had to Google this, uh, the conversion here, because I did not oh, know. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I did like, Google that, I will say. I that. always struggle with those. Yeah. They're not intuitive. Yeah. Well, and we're American, so we just, you know, we are what we are. We so. don't do metric. We don't. You know, we don't. We try, but we don't. I think there are parts of the U.S. that do have switched. I heard this somewhere. Uh -oh. There's somebody is trying. So shout out to them, whoever they are. Um, yeah. So first off and foremost, I don't think Dawn's here because she's at OSSEU. But we just want to say a huge congratulations to Dawn for being our new co-chair of our Chaos Board. And also a big old thank you to Nicole, who has been in that position the past two years. So uh, Don joins Sean Goggins, who is on the call as our uh, chairs of our chaos board. Um, so yeah, good job, Don. We look forward to having you on the board. Any comments, questions, conversation? About there are that? a few people on this call who get, did get elected to the board. And I did put in Slack, I need um, a picture and a really a quick bio <clears throat> so that we can add it to the website so just look for that in slack and you can just add your stuff that's it all right thanks matt um the uh next item on our agenda is that as we mentioned oss eu is currently going on there are some talks that are chaos related or of interest to the chaos community. I did not go through and see which ones have already happened. So apologies for that, but you can attend virtually. If you want. Um, and we do have a, uh, a workshop happening Thursday. And this is the topic of that. So if anybody is, I don't think that, I don't actually oh. know if that's gonna be virtual or not. I don't think so, right? No, and no, it's not happening. Oh, it's not? Is this the one with the open boiler? 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 Yeah, which yeah. Has, it's oiler. Um the room's not big enough. Okay. So I had taken it off of the Slack announcement. So anyway, okay. Yeah. So it's, we'll a just it's a conference room. Okay. You know I mean? So we really can't have a workshop. <laughs> I got you. Okay, so just pretend like that. Whole yeah, history. never. It, it never happened. <laughs> I think on like on premise, like at the site, Yahui is just kind of connecting with people in Bilbao okay. to show up, but there's no nothing official. Okay, so let's just put um, 
this is um, unofficially happening now. Mm -hmm. And I'll just delete this. It doesn't really matter. We're all on the call here. Yeah, yeah. right. We're going anyway. We're not going to be showing up. Maybe. I don't right, know. Right. You never know. Their way. It could be. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. Okay. But um, you can also uh, attend virtually if you all want to attend the rest of the conference. And I know um, Don Foster is there. There's a few other folks who are giving talks as, as well. So, um, yeah. Any uh, other any questions or anything else about OSSEU? Thanks for bringing that up, Matt. Yep. New key. Um, just wanted to give um, some visibility to some other upcoming chaos related talks. I will be um, in Charlotte for this and um, Don and Sean are you you all are doing this on site in Frankfurt. Yep. Frankfurt Germany. Germany nice nice nice. So if anyone is in the area and would like to attend that you can get tickets available here. I suppose you can also come here, but I think this is more for like Umbraco developers. So I don't know. I don't know, man. I just work here. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Usually I do not know what's going on. Um, no, so I mean, in, the, in the case of the event that Don and I are doing, it's for OSPO people really all across Europe or anywhere that they want to come from, but mostly aimed at the European group. Got you. Got you. Um, so yeah, so if if as, are there others are people giving talks like we've kind of struggled with this in the past of uh, having a good process for kind of promoting these talks within our community and outside of our community. So I don't know, I don't know what the answer to that is, but if for the meantime, if there are folks who are giving talks, let me know we can put them here we can talk about them in the community. Anybody have anything to add here. No, all right, we are flying through the agenda like a jet. So sure. the next, <laughs> I don't know, as the first thing that came to my mind is something fast. So yeah, uh, Ruth, um, I oh before you go, Ruth, I just wanted to say we I want to do this as a regular thing. Um, part of our um, survey results from our community survey was that the Chaos Africa, other communities feel a little separate from the main chaos. So um, an attempt to kind of bridge that gap a little, I'm gonna leave space for every um, community meeting for Ruth or whoever it happens to be around in the Chaos Africa community, just to give us an update of what's going on. Um, so I know sometimes we don't always hear what's going on there and um, we should, we would like to. So- There's a lot of really cool stuff happening in Chaos Africa extremely too. Extremely cool stuff yeah. happening, really yeah. cool. So um, I will turn it over to you, Ruth, if you would like to take the reins. Sure. Um, okay. So, kind of two things I want to, amongst all the awesome stuff going on. Um, so we are going to be collaborating with Angolan Open Source Community for a hackathon that they are organizing in. I'm going to drop a link soon. The hackathon they are organizing for October first. Um, will be collaborating with them. Um, they reached out one of their the the founders of the community, Antonio, joined Chaos Africa, I think a month or two months ago. So he kind of like reached out. Um, you know, they were trying to look for um partners, you know, funds and all that stuff. So um I chatted with him and I also chatted with Matt and we decided to kind of like um, also partner with them and provide some funds that they'll be needing for this hackathon. It's going to be in person. It's an in-person hackathon. I do plan to travel, but um, I'm still trying to figure out the visa, getting a visa there. So um, we'll be collaborating with them. Um, we have not officially started planning, um, but I'm... I'm going to be reaching out to you, Sean, about like if there are Ogor, if Ogo wants to participate in the hackathon as well, because they can also you can also bring in chaos projects as part of the partnership. Yeah. Um, with, so yes, I will be Absolutely. reaching out. 
doing. Um, <clears throat> that's I'll drop a link when I find the link to their community. They did an announcement on LinkedIn, so I'm going to drop a link soon to that. Um, and then another cool thing, which I think is really cool, um, the GitHub Copilot grant. We got a grant from GitHub Copilot. Uh, some months back to develop stories on how Africans are using um GitHub Copilot. And we came up with three stories, but there's just one I highlighted there. Um, one of the stories was to do a hackathon. We organized a hackathon in the past one month on where Chaos Africa members debuted a website using GitHub Copilot, fully using GitHub Copilot. Um, so we are trying to see how Copilot like enables um developer productivity and like efficiency. Um, so this is one of the end products of um that grants that we got. So we built this website. Some developers in Chaos Africa built this website. We are trying to host it, get a domain name and host it. But um, basically, this website is going to be a Chaos Africa owned project where people can submit um, open source projects that are built in Africa. So this is one of the stories we generated from that grant. Other stories that we did generate was, or we did um, reports, which I'm going to share um, as time goes on, is we kind of interviewed developers on how a neurodivergent developers on how they use how copilot helps them so we got some people that identify as being neurodivergent uh neurodivergent rather and then we did interviews with them and they told us how copilot helps their efficiency how copilot helps them um and then the third one was also during during chaos con africa we did a hack at, we did a workshop rather for for people to learn, folks to learn how to use GitHub Copilot. So yeah, I will share when those stories are out, I will share them, but this is the highlight one for the websites that we built using Copilot. So, yeah, any questions, happy to answer them. Yeah, I have a few questions, Ruth. So the site, so that the one that you shared, yeah, that one. So this is, this is a sample site, is that right? That was used or that was generated from the Copilot grant? Yeah, so it was actually built. The code lives in the chaos. Let me let me find the repository okay. link. So um initially when we started, we just wanted to show how we can come together to build something using Copilot. Mm -hmm. yep. But over like looking at this now, I see it as a project that we can maintain, right? Um so this is a live um website, right? It's not just a sample. I think it's something we can maintain over time. People can go in there, submit projects, and just be like a list of African projects. Like you could come here to find if you're looking for like African open source project. Just come okay. here. To... Um, but we yeah. haven't spread the word out for this yet because it's still under the grants, right? And we have not officially submitted this to GitHub. So okay. Um, so yeah. is the is the intention of this site to highlight projects in Africa? Mm -hmm. Is it to yes. Um, yes. help people projects. connect with them? So like if you were a developer and you wanted to um, connect, um, yeah, yes. So that's why we have like the community tab, uh, the community tab, and then the list of projects. So mm -hmm. two cases is one is to. I think that doesn't work yet or something. So two cases. One is to have like highlight those list of projects and then also for people to find projects because like there's also like a findability problem like which projects do I contribute to or okay. which projects are there. So it's also help like people find gotcha projects. Yes. Okay. And then sorry I have so many questions. So this is great. I just Fine. um so in terms of if you were a project and you wanted to submit, you know, your project to this. Um, what are the are there criteria that need to be kind of established for who can submit a project? Um, right now, um, I think it would be like filling through a form. Um, mm -hmm. and then 
we don't have like a particular criteria but what i see right now is like maybe being a maintainer um to submit like the the project out there but i'm going to have to confirm because the the lead for this is catherine uh but she's not here so okay. i'm going to have to like, confirm that date from her like what is the criteria but i would imagine that it should be submitting like a form and then uh, maybe through either through the GitHub repository or through here, um, because they're still um working on this and still trying to post it to okay fully functional yet. Okay, and Mike, I guess may also the question is like, what would constitute a project being like in Africa? You know, so I look at this list and I'm I'm guessing the six that are on here mm -hmm. are like when like when do you when when do you i yeah they're all like um so for example um i can speak to like chakra ui the the main creator of chakra ui is nigerian mm -hmm. um though he doesn't leave in Nigeria currently, right? But he is yep. Nigeria, right? Um, so and then open source community Africa, um, Chaos Africa. I think I think maybe that's also like uh, although it's like um uh, under chaos, but it's also um for Africans, right? Yep. So yeah. Then the Ebo API as well, and even Spatial Tech is Kenyan. Okay. Okay, that helps. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, youth, I think that is a very interesting idea. Like, I just want to continue from where uh, Math was uh, speaking. I got some ideas. We know there are lots of incubated projects from the African ecosystems. And it can also be a little bit tricky if that definition or description is not really posted up front for people to understand in such mm -hmm. a way like the Chuck Crab uh, project. Yeah, he, somebody might be, let's say in uh, France, in any part of the world, but then the developers community is typically helping young or let's say African ecosystem to, to grow, to develop with their challenges and limitations. So if the developers community is really from within the African, I mean, where whoever is the founder is not more of the concern. But my own concern now is if we take projects, because this is what people do a lot, they can clone projects, existing projects from GitHub, and then they just fork it here or just push it back up here. And I mean, like it's a new kind of project. Now, the challenge will be if we have to come to it, if, for example, I come to this kind of community with my research tools, I want to mine to understand certain uh, behavioral pattern, certain uh, kind of insight, then that will become so misleading. So it's really helpful if we could have a documentation that really guides or we'll just try to see it upfront we may not control everything, but at least it will be a guideline to clarify those kind of things. Because code provenance is an interesting metrics that they use to measure a lot of activities in a software engineering space. But by the way, this is an excellent idea to help nurture those kind of incubated projects, which are typically Africans, even if it is not solving emerging problem of Africa, but at least helping the developers community there to be feasible. That's excellent. Thank you very much, Armstrong and Matt. I have made a note there for myself as well to pass it on to like the team because I, I really think it's important that we make these things clear um, even as we maintain the project too. So yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I just have um, two things. One is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. 
Um, this is exactly why I wanted you to be able to do updates here in this meeting because I can guarantee you that most of us have not seen that and that is amazing. So thank you, Ruth, for bringing that up. Um, and the second thing is I want to just ask about this um, uh, upcoming hackathon. Do you want that on the chaos calendar or what do you, uh, wh what can I do to help you promote that? Yes, we would love it on the chaos calendar. And I think um, also maybe even on the LinkedIn, because I don't know if I, okay, I think I have access to the page. So yeah, so um, it could be on the chaos calendar while we plan through it, because um, we are we're working with them as partners. So yeah, and if we are going to have like, um, some chaos project in the hackathon it will be great to have it as a calendar although they have like an online parts I think they took off the online participation aspect of it because um, it might be too difficult for them to handle like online um, participants and in person so yeah. but then I think yeah I would let you know um, all the things that I do need from you in the coming week yeah yeah because we can blog about it we can put it on linkedin we can do whatever you want to do so just let me know how i can help you of course any other um, questions or comments for ruth or any of the chaos africa folks all right fair enough um so next i wanted to bring this up um, this started as a conversation in the Grimoire Lab Slack channel, so it may have gotten um, skipped by some people if you're not regularly in that channel, and I think it was even in a thread of that channel, so I just wanted to surface this because I think it's super, super important. Um, uh, so Courtney, who is on the call today, and Courtney, correct me if I'm wrong, um, you are an accessibility expert working um, on behalf of the WordPress? No. <laughs> no, you just so, <laughs> yep. Uh, I am employed at GoDaddy, and as um, as a developer advocate, my role is heavily advising on our open source contribution strategy. I found Chaos while I was at Open Source Summit North America. Um, I'm looking at implementing Grimoire for some WordPress project type of things. I am a contributor since 2009 to the WordPress project. Um, and as part of that, mostly I focus on the WordPress training team and also now sustainability. So project health, which obviously brings me to chaos. Um, that said, one of my friends is completely blind with a screen reader. He is the accessibility team rep. I have done a good bit of work on just educating myself about accessibility because of those things and as part of that one of the things that i have volunteered to do is not a thorough audit by any stretch but to double check through so i had shared the chaos website with my friend who is totally blind a devops engineer um, and the accessibility team rep in wordpress as one of our we've got 22 teams um and when i shared it with him he said we, we were actually looking specifically at event accessibility uh, and looking at that portion of Chaos's website on the metrics around event accessibility. And he had shared with me that he wished that the website itself would be a little bit more accessible. And so I said to, in the, in the Slack channel, basically, um, I know a little bit about making things like, making sure you've got the right heading sizes and, and you know, the basics. Um, and I could recommend some things that would help us on our specific website that are absolutely not accessibility overlays. Those are atrocious. And everybody in accessibility that I know detests overlays, tools that will just tell you, here's what you need to go fix. Uh, and it will check it basically itself and tell you, here are the areas that you should pay attention to and fix. And out of that kind of came this conversation on, um, do we have an accessibility statement on the chaos website? I am fairly new to chaos overall. Um, there are things that I'm trying to help bring into the WordPress space as part of that. Um, but I have volunteered that I can help go through some of the things. Again, I wouldn't call myself an expert. I'm just someone that's really committed to, um, especially thinking about the experience of my friend that has a screen reader for all that he does. And is just a brilliant DevOps engineer. Um, so that's, that's the feedback. 
So really there are kind of two pieces to this conversation. One is that um, chaos, uh, ca making the chaos website more accessible. And I think that's a conversation and a project in and of itself. Um, we, um, for those who don't know who might be new to chaos, we um, are just now starting with a group we're calling our project managers. And so for when things like this, exactly like this come up, um, we have project managers that will be able to kind of take this thing and start creating a plan, you know, laying out like what needs to maybe be done and who we can involve and all of those pieces for that, for that project. So um, we, that pe the project managers are super new. We're only having our second meeting tomorrow. Um, so that being said, I think this would be an excellent project for us to work on. So, um, and yes, we do use WordPress uh, for our site. And I believe, and, and obviously I think Kevin's on the meeting. Yeah, Kevin Lombard is um, the one that, who does most of the work on the website. The plugins and the themes and everything that we choose have been passed as accessible, quote unquote, but obviously there, you know, there are gaps that we can work on and look at. So thank you very much for bringing that up, Courtney. Um, so the second piece of this is creating an accessibility statement on behalf of chaos. And I read through um, some of these resources that um, Courtney provided, which are super interesting. And um, I had not heard of this before. So I'm really glad that it's come up. I'll note here that Amber Hines, who wrote this, um, is the CEO, I believe, at Equalize Digital. She's one of three partners, partner owners there. Equalize Digital is the plugin that, well, Accessibility Checker is a plugin that her agency has created that will tell you when things are, um, like you, you forgot your alt text, you need to add your proper headings. It will check for more details than that, but I'm simplifying for now. Um, that plugin is in use on NASA's new website that's coming on beta.nasa.gov. Um, so you can check out some things in that regard. And I can actually let people log in and see on the NASA beta site. I can get people in if they really want to see how NASA is using WordPress. But the main point there is that um, Amber is considered to be an accessibility expert for agency, does audits of various websites as well but they also create tooling to help websites become more accessible and again the base plugin for that one totally free in the wordpress repo so let's just make a note of that here equalize digital plugin for wordpress that's excellent thank you so much um, so basically what this, I, I'm imagining this would be similar to our data use statement that chaos has, where it's just kind of explicitly states our stand on things and the ways in which we are addressing accessibility in the project. And also uh, a way to uh, tell people how to get assistance, I think would be excellent as well. Um, so there's also this on how to generate one or start to write one. So I did not do this yet. I would I wanted to just ask the community. I wanted to, OK, a couple of things. I want to make sure that the community was OK with us doing this. I can't imagine why we wouldn't. But if somebody does have concerns, I want to leave space for that. And I if, have no concerns. It's mostly just like the the best way to do it. Yeah, and my, that was, yeah. Oh, go ahead. my thinking on creating the accessibility statement, it does inform people that read it what version of WCAG that they're aiming to meet. Mm -hmm. So I think that before the statement should be done, we should look through setting up the accessibility checker plugin by Equalize Digital and doing kind of the base cleanup on things. Um, and and kind of assessing at what point are we, what might it take to move on? Um, and I'll look again for some tooling that might tell us how close we are to various WCAG standards. Um, but, and it, again, I don't think that everything has to be site-wide completely perfect, but I think 
getting a baseline by doing a little bit of some maintenance around accessibility um, would help us identify what version at least that we want to tell people we're aiming for. Uh, I mean, I, I agree with that. The, the, just doing a preliminary assessment of our site before we issue a statement seems like the right order. <laughs> is a, Courtney, is a statement just about the website? <clears throat> so like you, you talk about- Yes. Okay. Yes, in this case, it would, it, and, and I believe that we could modify the wording to include that. So I don't know yet. One of the things that I have shown to my friend, Alex, uh, who has spoken at many of our events in the WordPress space, I actually showed him the dashboard at, along with another uh, sponsor contributor that works on accessibility and the Gramore dashboards would be not in the scope of this statement at this time. Um, but I could put us in touch with some people that might actually care to give some feedback to those things. Okay. Cause I'm thinking we, I, interestingly, like the next thing on the agenda is about <laughs> talking about accessibility in our DEI MD statement, which is a different project. But um, like we also talk in that DEI.MD file, not just about the website, but about things like having meetings that are globally friendly to everybody, like as an accessibility issue or providing translation services, you know, or captioning on a Zoom call, which we didn't, but like things like that, which go beyond the website that a statement might want to include as well. Yeah, that's interesting. I think maybe as we get closer to having the statement, we look and see if there are examples of others that have scoped their statements bigger, yeah. um, or if there is a place to maybe say uh, that the footer statement, oftentimes it lands somewhere kind of in the footer of sites. But if That's the footer statement enough. says, this is about the website, you can go here to learn more about our accessibility statements for everything else. Broadly across the community. Yeah, okay. make that a page in the website or something like that. So okay. that way there could be some clarity because we may be closer to certain levels of standards for simpler areas like the website, whereas perhaps building out, making sure that Gramore has a certain WCAG standard might be a little more challenging. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a yeah. little bit of a dev. I'll say that. I could get people, <laughs> I could teach people to be a junior dev. Um, ah. Yeah. But I think about accessibility in all the materials that it are in WordPress documentation and WordPress training. That's kind of a background former school teacher. So I have to think about this stuff uh, when I'm in an education mode. Cool. Elizabeth, there's a comment from Victoria in the chat as well. I just saw that, Victoria. Guess what? Guess what you just volunteered yourself for <laughs> to work uh. on this? <laughs> Um, that great. would be amazing. Um, for those who haven't seen her comment, it says, hello, everyone. I'm an accessibility designer, and I recently check websites for accessibility compliance. She, you're using the WAVE plugin and the NVDA screen reader to check. Um, would also be willing to send in uh, her findings as well. So I'm just going to I hate to put this down, but I'm going to. <laughs> Victoria also doing an internal audit of uh, the chaos website. Oops, there we go. A little heart for you, Victoria. I'll put one in my chat too. Thank you so much for, for speaking up here and um, offering to do that. Uh, so this is, you know what, this is why I, I tell people to come to these meetings because stuff pops up and there are always opportunities that kind of crop up. So um, yay, so thank you. Uh, so okay so we want to do this audit we want to clean stuff up first and then we're going to start to craft this statement is that what we all kind of decided yeah that works okay okay perfect perfect so then once we get that done we'll talk about where that statement will live maybe because i didn't know if we wanted to, to generate it here or if we want to just start with a google doc and just do our thing how we do uh what, what we want to do but we won't worry about that yet we I would probably it generate it there at least just because they'll get like if it's that group <laughs> they'll probably give us a pretty good template that we could go from yeah 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 great point that's a great point 
All right, um, Courtney, thank you again for just bringing this up and for being willing to help us kind of on our journey here, because <laughs> this is something that's um, new for us as well. So um, we absolutely. Really and and again, you know, what brought me here was meeting Georg at Open Source Summit North America and then checking out Gramore for potentially using it across WordPress.org. So um, good synergies happening. It really is. Um, and then Ruth has an excellent comment too about uh, creating an issue in the community repo. So I can certainly do that so that we kind of have this conversation documented somewhere more visible than just in these minute notes. Um, awesome. Thanks, Ruth. That's a great idea. Okay. All right, any other comments, questions, anything else to say about this bit right here? Okay. Um, let's go on. Um, guessing Matt, you put this in. Here. I did. Yep. So I just wanted to keep people posted. This came up in the DEI workgroup call last week. So the current DEI.md file that we're continuing to move forward lives at that link at the top. And then um, folks from GitLab had provided some additional input um, around project access, actually. So you know, if you recall like that A, B, C, D, E, those are kind of like chaos related ways to think about access just because we were giving examples of how projects could think about access. Um, and folks at, at GitLab had also provided some feedback. And so if you go back to the minutes and you click on, yep, that one. So this is kind of where we're at right now. This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different ways to think about access and just things that they're doing as well. And interestingly, those guidelines, number eight, who we talked about, um, are are there. So, um, so anyway, I just wanted to let people know that this is continuing to move forward. And Elizabeth, I'll probably be issuing a pull request pretty much with this text against the DEI.md file in that repository. But I just wanted to bring this forward to everybody. And if you have comments or questions or concerns, that's no problem. Um, and then also, if you go back to the minutes, there was a question about um, would separate DEI.md files be required for each of an organization's individual projects? Mm -hmm. Basically, this is like the question of um, does an organizational level structure, you know, like what we have with chaos and um, GitHub, does that constitute the entirety of a project or do, does a particular repo within that org constitute a particular project? You know what I mean? Kind of those those layers of abstraction. In the in the DEI uh, working work group, we were like, well, it, it'll always depend because different groups are different. So sometimes one org um, just has a few repositories that are totally focused on a project. Others, Don had pointed out, like at VMware, they have the VMware org, and then within there, each repository is a particular project. And so I think kind of came to this conclusion, see that um, add disclaimer, where I need to rewrite this a little bit better, but basically just saying there are times <laughs> where this is a project at the org level. There are other times where an org can contain many projects. It's up to you as an applicant to be clear on what you're badging. And so if you do have one org with many projects as represented across many repos, then it's you have to badge, or at least if each one of those projects wants a badge, they have to be, yes, each one will have to be submitted. Um, so just it's just a disclaimer to, to kind of specify what this DEI.md file covers. You know what I mean? Like it covers this breadth of stuff um, because we could never really sort that out 
on our end. So I just wanted to let people know on that as well. I don't know if people have questions or comments on that. Uh, I had one question, and I'm sure there has been a conversation about this that I missed. Mm -hmm. um, is there any concern with this being too many? Um, so I've been trying to keep it at 10. So, I mean, maybe it is too many. I think if you go to the DEI.md file right now, one of them is 10. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Well, maybe not 10, maybe seven. Um, That's a lot. It is. It. So... maybe they're all just suggestions right right and i think the way this re reads it, i personally think it's clear and fine and that these are examples i guess time will tell <laughs> the feedback that we get if people are like whoa hold I up i can't this do all these and we're mm -hmm. like you're not supposed to do all of these these right. are just examples <laughs> of what you could do okay. okay yeah yeah i agree I, I guess we'll just see how it goes Mm -hmm. And I, honestly, I think for a while it was like 15 and we spent time trying to just merge some or yeah. of some of the suggestions as maybe they were too specific and we can continue to do that over time. Yeah, we'll iterate. That's fine. Yep. Any other comments, questions, anything with project badging? Because we got three minutes left. So the next one is me. So I just want people to know the science context working group or the science context group is merging with university, at least temporarily. I think there was quite a bit of overlap there. At least people had, had shared interests. We, we actually had some people who probably were more in university OSPOs attending the science. <laughs> so um, uh, Melissa and Anessa were both completely completely okay with with doing this for so at least for the time being science is being merged into university um, to think about the metrics that are critical in that area so that's that um i did see that you uh archived um the science channel yeah just in case anybody's looking for it um do we need to what we, I, sorry it had been low activity for sure. Yeah. Um, what other changes would ripple down then? I'm assuming we would need to change the website because it's probably still listed under working. Oh, groups. yeah, probably so. I took it off the calendar. That's probably Do, about it. Um, it didn't have a repo even, did it? I don't think so. Okay. No. And I did put a note. <coughs> university uh slack that this is where those conversations are happening just in case anybody was confused so okay, yeah. perfect if anybody finds reference to the science somewhere else um let us know and we'll change it okay and then the and last two things are i just was looking for some su design support and on um, <laughs> this particular that picture that you see right there with those boxes. And I think there are some people that are going to give me some <laughs> some ideas on how to make this look like it's a little bit more modern than it is. Um, so thank you for people who have an interest in that. And you can go back to the... And then the last thing is I've started to put the book chapter together. Yeah, you can click on this. So this is the to-do group has asked us to put together a book chapter. Um, and I've started to put text to things as opposed to just a list to start kind of highlighting what we can talk about in this book chapter. So if anybody has an interest in helping me author this, I'm more than happy to accept your <laughs> willing to, willingness to help. Willingness to help, yeah. And this also um, may be worked on in the OSPO working group, Matt, or at least that group will know about it. Yeah, well, they definitely do know about it in the OSPO working group. In fact, if you like go back to the book chapter, yeah, that's where it comes up the most. Well, like a lot of, so like scroll down uh, just a little bit to like that list there, A, B, C, D. And then the discovery, like all of those are conversations from the OSPO working group. And so basically I asked the question in the OSPO working group, take notes and then convert the conversation that came out of there into text is, is how I'm working on writing this. 
Awesome. So I'm not, I'm hopefully I'm not making anything up myself. It's just <laughs> coming straight from the group's conversation. Well, I'm sure it would be brilliant if it did come from you, Matt. So oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are actually one minute over. Um, so I will stop sharing and we will uh, wrap up the meeting. If anybody has anything else to add, um, let's do it async. And we will see you all here same time, same place next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you. See, see you later. later.